September and the coho salmon have started staging to run the rivers here on Vancouver Island. On this adventure, I'm currently driving out to the west coast of Vancouver Island where I'm going to do some camping with some friends and family and some shore fishing to hopefully catch some of those coho. Wish me luck. We've been doing this fishing trip now for three years. I absolutely love this type of fishing, coming out, throwing some heavy lures off the beach and hooking into some big coho. It's, uh, it's a blast, let me tell you. Waiting for uh, the one-way bridge and as I'm just staring at the water and I'm seeing fish jumping everywhere, this, uh, it's looking good. Oh yeah, look at all the people out there on the point fishing. Heck yeah, let's do this! I'm excited. We're all checked into our site. Now to go set up in the rain. Fun. So this campground's on the Apache Dot First Nation. Now there's two kind of sections. There's like the north section and the south section. Yeah, it's way closer to the river, the south section, so that's why we opt to come down here. The other side's a little more like nice for RVs and whatnot. Don't buy toys for kids. They just need sand and rocks. Hooey, getting there, getting there. Rain's slowing down a little bit, made it a little bit nicer to set up. These guys have quite the party, holy. Will it still work is the question. Skip every other as I tighten. Sort of like doing lug nuts on a tire. I got a little awning I'm gonna put out the front here. Tommy's gonna love it. Ah! Let's go. You know, we just kind of finished setting up camp. There's lots of, lots of people here fishing and we've even, we're even seeing fish jump so. They're here. Beyond that bridge is considered fresh water. Everything on this side is salt water. So you need a salt water license with a salmon stamp to fish on this side. And you need a fresh water license with a salmon stamp to fish on the other side of the bridge. However, you can't keep anything on the other side of that bridge. Okay, so what we're using, this is a, uh, a three inch extra heavy buzz bomb. And then there's just a bead, and then a bumper, and then a swivel, the Siwash hook, barbless, of course. So the reason we use buzz bombs is just because the, the weight of them really allows you to cast them far out there. Almost six, heading out for the golden hour, or maybe the silver hour. Golden hour is probably morning. Let's call it the silver hour. We're seeing a lot jump down by the bridge there, so we're gonna walk down there and throw some lines. And then the tide goes up and we can't get back. <laughs> uh, we're out on this log all night. Lots jumping near like the pillars. Oh, right there, look at that. Near like the pillars. Oh, come here, buddy. That's so cool when they jump. It's awesome. If only they jump onto my lure. So Sarah arrived, but unfortunately, she hit a big pothole as she was coming in the parking lot, and it knocked the serpentine belt off of the car. She drove it right to the campsite, but. The car is out of commission right now, so now we have to deal with that. So tomorrow we're going to either look at getting a new belt, watch some YouTube videos of how to change it, or maybe we'll just get it towed to the nearest city. That pole. Woo, look at that. Beauty. I don't know how many casts I've done, but probably north of 50. 
They're doing their little uh, dance, but they just don't want to play, man. Man, it's really starting to rain. A couple more casts. It's not too deep to get back. Last year we had this campsite right here on the shore. And I had my little tin boat and I just launched it back here by the bridge and then I anchored it right here. It was pretty nice. I took it out. You, there's a little spot out the bay a little bit that's open for Chinook and we every time we went out we got a really decent Chinook. It was pretty cool. I think we ended up with three Chinook last year and two coho. It was kind of slow though the coho. There was like four of us casting and I was the only one to catch two. It's getting deeper going this way. There's not over the way, there's not over the way. There's... Well, I don't know if my baby's gonna sleep because my neighbors are doing some kind of Filipino karaoke, I think. Jay's not impressed. I don't know. Either. I'm hoping I don't get a YouTube copyright strike, but what, for songs. Yeah, I don't think they, I don't think they'll recognize any of it. See you in the morning. All right, here we go. It's Saturday now. I have no idea what time it is, but I think it's somewhere like 6.30 or 7. I didn't quite get up as early as I wanted to, but I had a rough sleep the night before, so I had to get some rest. The tide is low. Lots of people out here. I'm trying to squeeze in there somewhere. You probably can't see it, but they're jumping right there. This guy's got one dragon one in right now. I just pulled one off the beach. That's a good size coho. Nice and fat. Holy. I'll go a little further out. New spot. Oh, yeah. Right in front of me. Those are good fish. There's a lot of people out here. I'm caught in that seagull. Trying to just come in real slow here so I don't kill this thing. Oh man. Get you untangled, buddy. No, 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 no. no. Come here, come here. There we go. Uh oh, he's calling for his backup. After that little seagull incident, I think I'm gonna take a little break. Go find a new spot or something. There's a white triangle here. And then there's another white triangle over there. So as long as you're towards the ocean on that, on that side of the triangle, you're allowed to use a treble hook. It still has to be barbless. But on this side, like all of these guys, should be using a single barbless. Get rid of this buzz bomb and go to a coho spoon. I'm gonna try the spoon now, a little bit of yarn. I think I'm gonna call it for now, go get some breakfast and coffee. Hi, right, Tom Tom. Was that good? Good breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're heading out for round two, day two. We just saw the one fish come in from some guy this morning. There's like probably 50 people fishing and lots of fish jumping. My buddy Eric showed up, so I'm gonna go see if he's got anything. Anything? Go we'll find a nice spot on the point here. There's Jay. Oh, my knees. 
Oh, it's still got that blue and silver, that heavy spoon with a little bit of yarn. I can't quite cast where I want to cast, so I'm going to go back to a buzz bomb for a little bit extra weight. That guy just got a flounder. That's crazy. The buzz bomb, hopefully I'll be able to get a little more range. So even though the rain stopped, it's basically impossible to get dry here. It's just constant mist in the air. There's a nice breeze right now, so that's helping a little bit, but just kind of committed to being wet. Luckily, it's not that cold, so. All right, Jay's on one. <laughs> Go out in the water, go out in the water. And wa walk them right on the beach, like almost run them back. There you go. Hey. Yeah. A little coho, wild coho, nice. Nice job, Jay. There we go. I see him, dude. I got a cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jay went back to camp, so I stole his lure. Let's do this. As soon as Jay caught that fish, everybody moved in. It's kind of funny. That's how it works, though. School's here. I'm not complaining about it. It's all good. There's lots of room for everyone. Taking a video of this guy just for you, Jesse. You know who you are. I'll see you in a rod. We've been out here for maybe an hour and a half or so now. Probably do another 20 minutes before I head back and check on uh, camp. Looks like he's cleaning a uh, coho right there. I think that's the guy who caught one beside me this morning. All right, a couple more casts and I think I'm gonna head back to camp. See my babies. Good luck. I'll, I'll be back out in a bit. If you're not back over there. I mean, probably done like a thousand casts, literally, at this point. And that's what it takes. It's, these fish are not easy to catch. There's a ton of them in there. But at this point in their life cycle, they're not really looking at eating. But you just kind of got to piss them off, get that lure right in front of their face and get lucky. And they'll kind of snap at it and hopefully you hook into one. Heading back out for round three of day two. There you go. He was using, I was talking to him earlier, he was using all kinds of different stuff. He had a little buzz bomb he's, on. He's been hard at it too. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. There it is, the bite is on. You saw it. Thing is, if you just get a lure in front of their face, they might just bite it. Maybe it is. It doesn't feel heavy. I didn't think mine was really heavy either. Oh no! Yeah. One way to land. Try it again. Yeah, I have to get another one. Here. Thanks. Hey, he's really silver. Oh, nice. oh he's done now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice day. Hey buddy. A wild call. Alright, I'm gonna head back.
Kevin showed up. New serpentine belt. This one's got a nice chunk out of it. We probably could have limped home with it, maybe. But yeah. All right, I'm ready for. There you go, nice fish. You win in the derby or what? Yeah, I, th I think so. <laughs> really? Nice. Oh, Kevin's here. Brought the serpentine belt. We got it put on, so that's taken care of. Now we can get back to fishing. Lots of jumping, but nobody catching anything. Fish jumping everywhere. All right, I'm walking back to the point where Jay and I had luck earlier. A lot of people over there squeeze in somewhere. Is that a stumble on the rocks? Yeah. And he jumped off. No way. Were you walking him back to the beach, kind of? Yeah, I was walking back. And then the guy next to me literally caught the one like ten seconds later. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I've been casting for probably an hour and a half now. Seen one fish come up, but no bites for me. Reel got real squeaky. Touch salt water, I think. Tying on a new spoon here. Well, it's actually the same one I had on before. It's got a lot of weight to it. Good for casting. Don't make fun of my knots either. I'm a sailor. I can tie them however I want, all right? You gotta let him go. Take a pick. Back in the water quick. Hold on. Hey, we're heading back for dinner. Finding anything? He found a spinner. Oh, really? Sweet. Over by the bridge. Nice. It's tough though. I mean, that was like session four or five, maybe? Why is it deep in pattern? All right, making up some hot dogs and that's actually bear from my bear hunt if you haven't seen that yet all right round five i think still day two Falling in. Fish seem to have stopped jumping, so it just doesn't give you that confidence to keep casting. So we're heading back, we'll have a fire and hang out. We'll see you in the morning. Day three, session one. It's probably 7 a.m. or so. I didn't quite get up as early as I wanted to. It's just way too comfortable in my tent. foggy this morning. Well, I think I'm going to try the sandbar again. The tide's low. There he goes. Here's a little. Found out there's a Filipino fishing derby going on here. Oh yeah, so you think it like followed you? Yeah. Well, 
that's enough casting for me for the morning anyway. I might leave my waiters on, go back and have some breakfast and coffee and then maybe come out for a couple more casts. Wild? Yeah. Jay caught this while we weren't around. All right, all packed up. I'm gonna go throw a couple casts just before we leave. Thought I'd go walk on the bridge, see if I could see the school, but it's pretty murky looking. Sometimes you can see big schools. I didn't want to come up here until we were uh, leaving because seeing giant schools of fish and knowing you can't catch them, it's so frustrating. It's a pretty cool spot. That's the point we've been fishing mostly. Jay caught a fish off this log over here. And then I caught that little one way out there by those couple boats, the drift boat out there. Our camp's just beyond those tall trees. A little rock scramble here. How did I get up here? Is this the way I came? We're leaving camp. Um, we're gonna go look for some grouse and maybe even some deer, so Kevin's following behind me. All right, on to the first logging road here. Jay told me this would be gated. It's all crown land here, so the gate's unlocked, I'm going in. All right, gate was unlocked. So we did the same trip last year, exact same weekend. And uh, this was actually Kevin's very first hunt. We went out the night we were headed home and we came down this road and we ended up seeing three bears that night. I'm not really looking to shoot a bear, but I thought we'd just go for a drive and maybe look for uh, some grouse. And you never know, a deer maybe would be sweet, but there's not a lot of open cuts in this area to be glass and deer. Just pulling over to get some guns ready here. I'm gonna get this uh, single action shotgun ready to go. In case we see a grouse. And then I'm gonna throw my 270 here too. Because you never know, it might just be a big buck on the road somewhere. Egg, shotgun, 270. A couple bird shots here, why not? I'll throw them in here. All right, back on the road again. Just looking for those ditch chickens. Probably just walking that way. Gross. I'm not gonna push too much farther in there. Oh, we saw something, that's cool. Oh, saw grouse. I usually carry my uh, 410 22 combo for grouse hunting, but I had a new brake action 12 gauge I wanna try out, so. There's actually a giant spruce here, right there, a big tall one. This is a bit tighter than I hoped, but we're almost at the end now. That's some older bear sign there. Well, I'm starting my journey out of the woods. Decided to go for a little walk. This is something our hunting group does when we don't have communication. We build little arrows. So when we come to a, a fork in the road like this and Kevin comes from down here, he knows that I went here. And then if I come out, I'll convert this to an X so he knows that I've been here and I've already walked this route. Some cool mushrooms right here. I just stepped off the trail just a tiny bit. It's like a nice game trail, but there's tons of mushrooms and stuff here. I don't know mushrooms super well, but I think this might be a chanterelle. I might pick a few. A nice little haul of chanterelles here. All right, back at the truck. I'm gonna mosey our way out of here. It's 3.30. 
3.30 in the afternoon on day three and we finally found some pavement. I think this is where the hunting portion of this adventure ends and the travel home portion of this adventure begins. I still have about a two hour drive to get home. But overall, this adventure has been good. We caught a couple fish, we saw a grouse, we explored some new territory, and it's been fun. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye.